You know, on a night like this, when it's all dark and scary, there's no reason to go hungry on the trail. That's why I like to pack myself a little bit of cheese jerky. Hot dog, this stuff is good. I prefer the chicken flavor. Well, it's low in fat and high in protein. For those nights when you're oh, shivering on the trail, it's also good for the post-apocalypse. So that's why you all run on there to get yourself some cheese jerky. Once again, don't forget, cheese jerky. We have good meat. Well, call dirt. Every time I see you, it's pouring like cats and dogs. Come on over here and warm yourself. Well, today I wanted to share something real special with you. I got it almost done here. Have you ever ate a snake? Well, all poisonous and non-poisonous snake flesh can be eaten. It's quite edible. You just gotta take extreme care when securing a snake as the bite of some poisonous snakes can be fatal. Even after a dull darn snake's head's cut off, this reflex action can cause it to bite injecting poison. Best times to capture snakes is early in the morning or late in the evening when the temperatures are low and they're slow to move. Just go up behind them and use a fork shaped stick to pin them to the ground and grab them behind the head. Now, if you want to prepare what's real simple, keep your index finger on the top of the snake's head to prevent it from turning inside its skin and biting you. To prepare snakes for eating, use the following steps. Grip the snake firmly behind the head and cut off the head with a knife. <laughs> then slit the belly and remove the innards. You can use the innards for baiting traps and snares. Then go ahead and skin the snake. You can use a snake skin for a belt or a strap or some similar item. Now, if you're roughing it in the field, you might come across the good old squirrel or something like that. How do you prepare that, T-Bird? Well, what you do is you want to cut the neck as close as you can to the body. Cut an incision in the abdomen cavity and clean out those guts. Save the neck and the liver and the heart for stew. Thoroughly clean and dry the entrails for use as cordage. Yes, sir, you can make a bow and arrow out of that cordage. It's called cat gut. Just ain't out of a cat. Just wash out the abdominal cavity with fresh water. You can boil fowl or cook it over a spit over a fire. You should boil scavenger birds like vultures and buzzards for at least 20 minutes to kill any parasites. You can use the feathers from the fowl for insulating your shoes, your clothing, or your bedding. You can also use feathers for fish lures. Now you got a medium-sized mammal, say, well, I don't know, say a gopher or something. The game you trap or snare will generally be alive when you find it, and therefore dangerous. Be mighty careful when you approach to trapped animal. Use a spear or a club and kill it as soon as you can while you keep a safe distance. Now after you kill that animal, it immediately bleed it by cutting its throat and holding it upside down. You must drag the carcass somewhere. Do so before you cut the hide so the carcass is protected from the dirt and debris that might contaminate it. Clean the animal near a stream, for example, as possible. You can wash and cool the carcass and all the edible parts. Now then, fleas and parasites will leave a cool body. So if the situation allows, wait till the animal cools down before messing and handling that fur so you don't get no fleas. For skin and small game, just place the carcass belly up. On a slope, if available, you can use rocks or brush to support it. Remove those genitals by cutting a circular area. Now, try to get rid of those glands. You can just hack the legs off right above the knee. Try to wash that stuff out if you can and avoid changing the meat. Now, split the hide from the tail to the throat. Make sure the cut's nice and shallow so you don't pierce them guts. Then insert your knife under the skin, kind of taking care not to cut into the body cavity. 
peel the hide back several inches on each side to keep the hair out of the meat. Now open the chest cavity for, by splitting the sternum. You can do this by cutting one side or the other. Now reach inside and cut the windpipe and the gullet as close to the base of the skull as possible. Now, with the forward end of the intestine tract free, work your way to the rear, lifting out the internal organs and the intestines. Cut only when necessary. Now, carefully cut the bladder away from the carcass so you don't puncture the bladder. Urine can contaminate meat. Now pinch to the urethra tightly and cut it beyond that point you're pinching. Remove the bladder. From the outside of the carcass, cut a circle around the anus. Then pull the anus into the body cavity and out of the carcass. Lift and roll the carcass to drain all the blood. Now don't forget to try to save that blood. Try, try to save it because it's a vital source of food and salt. Just make sure you boil it thoroughly. Now you can remove the hide, make cuts along the inside of the legs to just about where the hoof or the paw. Then peel back the skin using your knife in a slicing motion. Cut through those membranes and the skin and the meat. Continue this until the entire skin is removed. Now remember, most of those entrails are usable. The heart, liver, and kidneys are edible. Make a stew out of it. Cut open the heart and remove the blood from its chambers. You know, clean blood spattered on the meat will glaze it over and help preserve that meat for a short time. However, if the animal is not properly bled, the blood will pool in the bottom and that'll contaminate the meat. Just cut away any bad parts. Now, if the temperatures are below 40 degrees, well, you can leave that meat hanging up for several days to up to a week without dangerous foliage. Now, if maggots get the meat, remove the maggots and cut off the discolored meat. Then, soak those maggots in fresh water and drain. The maggots are also edible and high in protein, as much as 25 times the amount of protein by weight as beef. Now, all this blood you drain contains a lot of salts and nutrients, and it's a good base for soups. Thoroughly clean the intestines and use them as for storing or, or smoking food or, or lashing general use. Make sure they're completely dry to preclude rot. Now the head of most animals contains lots of meat, which is relatively easy to get. Just skin the head and cut out the tongue. Remove the outer skin from the tongue after it's cooked. Cut or scrape the meat from the head. If you prefer, you can roast the head over an open fire before cutting off the meat. The eyeballs are edible. Cook them, but discard the retina. It's like a plastic little disc. Now, the brain is also edible. In fact, some people consider it a delicacy. The brain is also used to tan leather. The theory being that the brain of an animal is adequate to tan its hide. Use the tendons and the ligaments of the animal's body for lashing. The marrow from bones are a rich food source. Crack them bones open and scrape out that marrow and use the bones to make weapons. Now, if the situation at time allows, you should preserve extra meat for later use. Now that brings me to Jay's jerky. <laughs> you guys didn't think I was going to forget, did you? Hell, I love Jay's jerky. You know, it beats killing a rascal little kind of varmint out there and trying to gobble him down. Hell, I like to just reach in my battle pack and pull out four or five assorted flavors from Jay's jerky. You know, Jay's jerky ain't made out of eyeballs or guts or none of that other stuff. There ain't no bile or urine or dust or leaves or nothing like that stuff to it either. <laughs> it comes in a convenient, reopenable plastic bag, and it helps preserve the freshness. Now, it's high protein and low in fat. It'll keep you going on the trail. Now, my favorite is the chicken flavor, but you need to check them out yourself. In order to get your battle pack full of this tasty Jay's jerky, you need to get a hold of Jay through. Once again, this is T-Bird. Welcome to my campfire here on the train. You folks, take it easy, and God bless the Republic. <laughs>